brothers and sisters in Christ, I welcome you as we gather on this, the second Sunday of Easter. As you see, our choristers are not with us, so I ask you to join in the singing, as I always say, offering whatever song you have within you as an offering to the Lord. At a time when considerable changes are coming to my life and to yours pastorally, the doubts that accompany such momentous decisions are real. The doubts have the power to keep me up at night, to test my faith, and really sometimes erode my hope. And sometimes I'm able to draw on my faith and hope and love, but other times I feel the agony of the uncertainty of the future ahead. This is my reality, and I suspect it is for some of you, just as it was with the disciples at the resurrection. The second Sunday of Easter is devoted to doubt. Doubt is real. And the story of the doubting Thomas is always read on this Sunday, regardless of the year in our three-year cycle. As you know, Thomas is Greek for the word twin. And but his twin, if he ever had one, does not appear in the Gospels. But there are some commentators to suggest that each of us are Thomas's twin. Each of us have the nagging doubts that prompt us to get up and address the situation, to address and re resolve what needs our intention, but also, as we know, sometimes doubt can hold us back. Doubt has the power to take us away from our journey, but profoundly, if we work on it and through our doubts, it can conversely lead to new discoveries about ourselves, about each other, and about God. Our Bible tells us, our readings, do not doubt but believe. Do not doubt, but believe. Our service continues on page 355 of the prayer book. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen We say together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we proclaim together glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118, verses 14 through 29. Let us read it responsively by whole verse. I will read the even-numbered verses. You will read the odd-numbered verses. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the presence of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. All the possessions of our branches of the Lord of the Lord. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the rulers 
ruler of the kings of earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn for the gradual, is there something about that name? Please stand. with you and also with you the continuation of the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to john glory, glory to you lord christ when it was evening of the day of the resurrection the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the jews Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twins, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. 
although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. My sisters and brothers, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At the raising of Lazarus, our Lord Jesus Christ proclaimed, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me will live even though they die. And then, as if anticipating the uncertainty that would continue across the ages for thousands, 2,000 plus years to come, those nagging doubts and lingering disbeliefs of such an astounding claim, he asked Martha, and by extension each of us as his disciples, that very pointed question, do you believe? And that is a question that our Lord puts to us, do you believe? If I had one post-Easter prayer to express my faith needs, it would be a prayer to live as if this truth was real and meaningful to me. Because to live out our belief in Christ's resurrection is to, uh, to conquer all the demons of doubt and death that threaten us. When we are confronted 
by the barbaric violence in the Ukraine, or the scourge of the global pandemic, or the environmental degradation, or the corrosive effects of social and economic and political divisiveness within the world, if we live the resurrection, we are able to deal with many of these things. If I had a post-resurrection prayer, my prayer would be to follow in Martha's faith, which says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God who was to come into the world. I wish I could confess with that certainty of Peter in Acts chapter 5 verse 30 which says that our, the God of our Father raised up Jesus. And then to hear our Lord's encouragement to Thomas, do not doubt but believe and to experience what Paul calls in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, the power of his resurrection. And while we have read and proclaimed and professed many times over, living the resurrection is easier said than done. In fact, one of the features, one of the aspects of the earliest Christian stories as we read today is the high levels of disbelief. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 42, which we hear in today's psalm, our Lord would remind the disciples that the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. But many, many doubted the claims of the resurrection and recall the first to disbelieve, the first to disbelieve were those closest to the Lord. When the women come and tell the eleven that they have seen the risen Lord in the gospel, the account written by Mark, if we are told, they do not believe. But Luke, in chapter 24, verse 11, is even blunt, and he tells us the disciples did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. These are the disciples, the apostles. The 11 say they do not believe because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Further on, the two disciples who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, they report their account of the resurrected Christ of the eleven. And we are told in Luke again, the disciples do not believe them. And in Luke chapter 16 verse 14, our Lord then rebukes them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe. And although, as I said last week, Thomas takes this slander of being this infamous doubter, the reality is that doubt and disbelief abounded. In the ending, in the last chapter of Matthew, when he writes the resurrection narrative, he says in chapter 28, verse 17, ends with the observation that while some worship the risen Christ, there were still some who doubted. Disbelief in the resurrection, both amongst the followers and the detractors of our Lord Jesus Christ, really is an important and a large component of this origin story. But then we know, gradually, there is a growing movement of people who from all segments of society get beyond the doubt and the confusion and they are able to own a deep-seated conviction in the resurrection of our Lord. 
and as is the case with many important aspects of life, this conviction of the resurrection becomes easier in a sense to experience or to describe than to explain theologically. St. Paul called it unfathomable and inexpressible. It was that profound. But eventually there emerges this consensus, this consensual tradition of what they call first importance. What is most fundamental and most important to us as Christians that St. Paul captures in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 13. Which he says that he had received, preached and passed on to others this message that Christ died for our sins, was buried, raised on the third day and appeared publicly to many people. But our Lord's question to Martha continues and journeys through history and comes to us again today. Do you believe this? And the question is not one of these binary right and wrongs. The question is not something to be considered intellectually but to be responded to spiritually. Because if you do believe in the risen Christ, the question is, what difference does it make? What difference is this belief, this space, this commitment to the risen Christ making in your life? And more importantly, to us as a church, not just a parish, but united as the body of Christ, what should and does a resurrection faith look like in the 21st century? What should it mean for us to live as if we believed that Christ was raised from the dead? Committing to Christ, committing to faith, believing in the resurrection is not a cop out from this world. It's not for us to re 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 retreat from the world and go and live in a corner and wait on God or live a life focused exclusively on matters of faith. But rather, the resurrection is offered to us as the foundation for all of our living. It should shape everything we do. It should inspire all that we are. All of us have been following, or most of us, what is going on in the Ukraine. And we heard and we've seen from President Zelensky, he reminded us of how powerful hope is. How hope in a hopeless situation exerts a most powerful force. The Russians honestly believed that they would have been in charge of Ukraine in a week. But the citizens have found hope. They have a faith. They believe in what they are fighting for. They believe in the cause that they are committed to. And we, in our spiritual lives, are asked as we prepare and we await the final resurrection to live what our Lord calls in John 10, chapter t and verse 10, to live an abundant life. To live an abundant life. As we are told in Acts chapter 5, verse 20, we are called to live 
the full message of this new life in Christ. And that is a phrase that is pregnant with possibilities for each and every one of us. But we are asked to practice the resurrection by living a life of faith and hope and love. But what does that mean? That means that we welcome the strangers and we shelter the homeless and we feed the hungry and we forgive one another and we nurture the young and we offer voice to the voiceless and we honor and protect the dignity of every being. In short, if we are to practice and live resurrection, we are called to live a selfish life, a selfless life of love. The resurrection calls us to live a selfless life of love. As we pass journey through Easter and through Lent, that, what, that hymn that captures that, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain I count but loss and poor contempt upon all my pride. And it ends with that love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. That is what the resurrection life is. God is calling us to surrender our soul, our life, our all to him to become instruments of his peace and his love in this world. Now, wonderful hymn that we learn in our childhood. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. Who says we will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each other's dignity and save each other's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. It's that simple. They will know we are Christians by our love. Again, the question that our Lord sends to us throughout the ages is a simple one. Do you believe this and do you live what you believe? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith in our triune God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to offer up the prayers of the people, let's focus our lives, our minds, our hearts, our souls on God's call for us to live a resurrected life. Let us pray. The prayers of the people are found on page 383, form one. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, our Anglican community, the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, Lee, our rural dean, Guy and Mario, our priests, and for all the clergy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, Josh, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the county of Broward, this city of Hollywood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For social barriers which divide to crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions are healed, and we live in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list, Mary and Pete Rodriguez, Stan Allen Jr., Sarah Allen, Nicholas and Jonathan Saunders, Heather and Ed Reed, Riley Rupert Rickendaller, Pat Miller, Stephanie and Jackson Gomez, Theodora Jurakan, Jackie and James Lowe, Zawilla Brath, Maud Fernander, Jan Pushkar, Rudy Ford, Varen Anderson, Thelma Camacho, Veronica Joyce, Karen Backus, Ben Martinez, Donna Talbert, Paul Crosta, Marjorie Jackson, David Andrew, Beverly Shin, Bob Whitehead and Loretta Stewart, Junie Priscilla Barton, Michael Fowler, Rose, Rosemary Saunders, Marie Henderson Williams, Michael Marcello Risi, Trevor James, Alan Curtin, Tyler Huete, Kirk Evans, Melanie Kenny, Dan Schwartz, Lynn Lee, Rita Mohaney. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those celebrating birthdays, Susie Ford, Anna Rincon, Lawrence Clark. Anniversaries for Francis, Francisca and Louis Maduro. And for anyone or anything you wish you care to mention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the clients of the Jubilee Center, the people of Madagascar, particularly the women and the children, for peace in Ukraine, for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation. And for all those dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, Lord, Lord, our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our act of penitence, let us confess our sins against God, and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Amen. Please stand for the greeting of the peace. As we said, in, I said in the notices, we are going to be resuming the shake, exchange of peace by the shake of hands. For those who prefer not to, as I said, you, if you keep your hands together, you can simply bow to each other. But again, the choice, please, is yours. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. I will just go through a few notices. As you all have seen in our meeting with the vestry, as I had indicated at the beginning that 
I did have some unused time, vacation time that I'm going to be taking and using before I go. And that's going to allow us to have a family vacation for the first time in three years. And if any of y'all, and I hope all of y'all do appreciate how significant that is to me and to my family. Amen. My going from here, as I said, is by is no small means. I said to someone, I'd actually already looked at Century Village and decided where I was going to go when I left St. James at whatever time. But the Lord has plans that sometimes we don't understand or anticipate, but we have to continue to walk by faith and do as our Lord says to Thomas, do not doubt but believe. I'm hoping and I will attempt for everyone to just touch base and, and I will have, and let me say this, um, the, the phone I'm, I have now, the number, will continue to operate um, for through May and June and I promise you to remain in contact this is a journey that we all have to make. And notwithstanding whatever changes in my role, we will always be united in faith. We will always remain united in love. And I will cherish the time I've had here with y'all for the rest of my life. There have been some changes in the COVID protocols, as y'all would have read. When we get into the, the Eucharist, I'm going to um, offer the Eucharist standing. We won't use the altar rails yet. And there'll be three options. You can come, you can with your hands open and receive the, the Eucharist. And if you don't want, you can go right and go back to your seats. Barbara will be on, sorry, you can go left. Barbara will be on my right, on your left, and if you want to get the common cup, you can so do from her. If you prefer and you want to get the bread and wine combined by intention, just put your hands over your shoulders, across your chest, and I will know that that is how you prefer. Please do what you are most comfortable with. The options are really there for yours. Again, as we noted, that we are going to be returning to the simpler forms of the bulletins where we will be reusing the Book of Common Prayer to guide us through our service. And just one now, if anybody knows that there was a pair of glasses um, left in the church and they're there, if anybody knows who they may belong to, please let us know. Those are the notices, and we now go in to our offertory hymn, which is the sweetest name of all, during which collection will be taken by the plate. Please stand. <laughs>
us with our assemblies offerings to your glory in the work of this church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy and love, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace 
And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin, St. James, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
it is for me, how wonderful it is to have persons back at the altar and also to begin to move back towards normalcy. It's going to take a while and each one of us can do it in our own way. I'm thankful for Lawrence being here as well. And I forgot earlier to sing him a blessed birthday song. So we're gonna do that now. And if we can, before we go in. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Lawrence, I hope you can forgive an old brain. So, let us now give God thanks for this foretaste of the heavenly banquet by praying together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for simply accepting us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow your head to receive God's blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work you do, to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you and those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 396. Sorry. It's in the hymnal number 396, which is Now thank we all our God. Please stand.
Hallelujah.